Number 10, the Maui Fund scandal. Now who would have guessed that the woman famous for handing out cars on her talk show is being cancelled by the entire world? Why? Well, Oprah made a career ending mistake when herself and Dwayne Johnson broke the one rule of being a billionaire. Don't ask poor people for their money. Last week, Oprah and The Rock announced that they would be starting a relief fund for the victims of the Maui wildfires. The People's Fund of Maui was given a solid $10 million to get off of the ground. $10 million donated by Oprah and Dwayne combined. So why is it just Oprah that's getting so much hate online? Well, it's because she has a net worth of, of roughly $2.8 billion. Billion with a B. The world is collectively furious at Oprah for having the audacity to ask working class citizens for charity when most people can barely afford to put food on their tables. The Rock and Oprah donated $5 million each to give the fund a head start. Well, guess what? $5 million to Oprah Winfrey is like 500 to us. Like it's still a lot, but it's chump change to her. Oprah addressed all the hate online, telling the Daily Mail that she was disappointed in the reactions from the world. Rather than focusing on the good things and the people of Maui, the world was mad that she asked them to give her a nickel. Well, Oprah has yet to confirm if she'll be donating any more to the fund, but so far it's not looking like she will. Number 9, her controversial beliefs. Oprah has had plenty of controversial people on her show, from so-called medical experts to psychologists to celebrities. Whatever is good for TV, it's good for Oprah. One particular incident that caused a ton of backlash for Oprah was when she did an interview with Suzanne Somers. She was brought onto the show to share her beauty secrets on how she was able to look so young. According to Summer, this treatment that she does on a regular basis will help. Suzanne claims that she rubs estrogen cream into her skin on one arm and smears progesterone in her other arm. Progesterone is just a fancy way of saying steroids. She also claimed that she took 60 supplements and vitamins a day, 40 in the morning, and 20 before bed. What really stirred the pot was this woman claiming to be a health expert and a so-called self-help author. But surprise, surprise, a doctor she is not. Medical experts started bashing Oprah, claiming that this type of extreme hormone therapy would actually be the cause of several diseases and illnesses. You know, like cancer. Despite Suzanne's claim that her specially made non-FDA approved bioidenticals are natural and safe, they're actually just synthetic conventional hormones that you can buy from a pharmacy. Oprah did everything in her power to sell this idea to her audience, believing 100% that these methods were useful and even claimed that she used the methods herself to make herself feel incredible. So this lady would rather risk her audience getting cancer than just telling them the truth. Solid. Number 8. The free cars. Who could forget Oprah's famous words? You get a car, you get a car, everyone gets a car. The moment was historical on her series and was parodied time and time again and it still does to this day. However, what many people don't know is that it was not as simple as here are the keys, have fun. When someone gives out anything on television, there is always a catch. For Oprah's audience, the catch was that if they wanted to drive away in their brand new car, they would have to pay $7,000 in taxes first. While Oprah studio would cover you know, the sales tax and the registration for the vehicles, the audience members were given a choice to either pay the $7,000 and take the car or just kind of take the cash instead. The infamous moment on the show featured 11 real teachers who were, according to Oprah, in desperate need of a new car. They, along with the audience members, received keys in a box on camera that Oprah claimed to be for their new cars. Everything has a catch even now though. For someone who is known for being super charitable and generous, the word free clearly means something else to Oprah. Number 7. She will never marry Stedman. Oprah and her partner Stedman have been together for a long, long time, but have never actually gotten married. While Stedman has never explained why this is, Oprah shared her side of the story. According to Oprah, getting married would mean that she would not be able to have her own life, claiming that everything she had built on her own would be at risk, like he was some kind of a career parasite or something. The strangest part about her logic behind this is the fact that she said on air that she wanted Stedman to propose to her as soon as possible, so not sure what that is. Their relationship has survived a lot despite the years of rumors and speculations. However, a source close to Oprah said that in her four years working with the show, she could tell that there was absolutely nothing there with Stedman. Oprah just wanted to portray herself as a woman who loves her man, you know? When in reality, Stedman probably has a house separate from Oprah's, but it's like one fifth the size. Number six, the NDAs. Confidentiality agreements are not uncommon in the world of Hollywood. Marvel will 
literally have someone take you out if even a single line leaks to the public. In Kitty Kelly's tell all book about Oprah, the author mentions the confidentiality agreements that co workers and guest stars were always made to sign. This included everyone from Tom Cruise to the person who made Tom Cruise's muffin. Over 500 staff members were forced to sign the document. One former employee, Elizabeth Cody, tried to write a book about her time working for Oprah, but she was apparently stopped by the courts, still being tied to the agreement that she had signed. The NDAs were not meant to be a way to keep just show secrets safe, but any and all of Oprah's secrets as well. According to Elizabeth, the document was signed by almost everyone in Oprah's life. She may have this brand of sweetness and kindness, but apparently that's not how she actually is. Elizabeth felt that she was in Oprah's pocket after she signed the paperwork. In 2010, a lawsuit was even filed against Oprah and her company because Unicus Performance Training claimed that they were fired for violating the terms of this agreement, specifically involving advertising with her name or the website of the show. That makes no sense. Number five, Diva. On air, Oprah is portrayed as a wholesome, sweet lady, but according to her stepmother, there is an unknown side to this woman, hidden from fans for years. According to Barbara, Oprah is one of the most controlling people that you will ever meet in your life. She claims that Oprah would not allow them to stay at her house when herself and her husband would try to visit, forcing them to stay in hotels with money out of their own pockets. Barbara also said that Oprah was quick to anger when it came to her staff, with several people being fired left and right over the years for the littlest things. But that's not all. Despite being a billionaire, Barbara allows her to stay at her house when she visits, something that Oprah apparently hates. The first time she actually stayed at her stepmother's place, Oprah allegedly complained that her bed sheets were not a thousand threads and that her bath towels were not big enough. Okay, that one I can forgive. Ever use a giant towel? I'm never going back. This woman has billions of dollars to do literally anything she wants and apparently what she wants is to make her family feel like a burden. Number four, the vegan cleanse. Now when I, when I learned about this next entry, I was genuinely shocked that Oprah Winfrey's show was never considered a toxic working environment. It turns out Oprah was a powerful woman when she was running the show. Oprah was an advocate for a ton of things on her show, but the one thing that she really doubled down on were her views on animal rights. Organizations like PETA praised Oprah for her advocacy, especially when she took it a step further by making her staff join her on a 21 day vegan cleanse. Now, while the cleanse was optional, if you signed up, there was no backing out. You were going to be vegan for 21 days or you were fired. Now, it was never actually confirmed if there was a penalty for leaving early, but according to one employee who participated in the cleanse, they were afraid to back out because Oprah was just so demanding. Oprah was a very serious woman behind the scenes, so we can only speculate what might have happened had she spotted a PA eating a Baconator. Number three, spiritual beliefs. Now I'm gonna start this entry by clarifying, I'm not making fun of your beliefs, okay? If you are spiritual, if you're a spiritual person in any way, shape, or form, please know this entry is about Oprah and Oprah alone, okay? In an interview with Harper Bazaar, Oprah mentioned her daily morning routine that starts at 8.30 in the morning with various spiritual exercises. After reading Gathered Truth, she opens up an app called Bowl of Saki that delivers teachings of the Sufi, followed by some light meditation. The controversy here comes from Oprah inviting several self-fulfillment gurus onto her show and just gushing about one specific one named Guru Gary Sukhov's preachings. Now, Oprah herself has claimed to have secret spiritual knowledge about tapping into personal courage and giving general spiritual advice, but she stopped diving too deep into spirituality after this backlash from her fans and readers of her magazine. They just didn't like that about Oprah. Number two, Wild Child. Several books have been published about Oprah over the years, some from her and some not. In her own book that she wrote, she revealed that growing up she was far from an easy kid to handle. When she was young, she was sent to live with her father Vernon after Oprah was caught stealing from her mother's purse. Despite being an on-screen persona known for charity and kindness, she was actually a menace throughout most of her life according to family members. As I mentioned previously on this list, Oprah's stepmother is not allowed to stay at her house and she's known to be pretty controlling. She admitted to doing some pretty troubling things at a young age, including staging an amnesia bout, breaking several things in her mother's home, and calling the police. According to Oprah's mother, she was uncontrollable, ungrateful, and after robbing her, maybe a little crazy. And at number one, her buddy, 
Dr. Phil. Oprah is not just responsible for many hopes and dreams being squashed live on air, but she is also the creator of many talk show celebrities, namely health expert Dr. Oz and life coach Dr. Phil. Now, before Dr. Phil had his own show, Oprah had asked him and his courtroom consulting firm to help her with a trial. Before meeting Oprah, Phil had zero interest in being a television personality, but Oprah made him see the light, so to speak. According to Phil, she helped him understand the power of these shows and what they were truly made for. For Phil, he brings people on his show who are struggling with personal issues that just so happen to be good for television. Remember that Catch Me Outside girl? Dr. Phil made her rich and famous. But it's not just Phil that's had some controversial moments though. Her other protege, Mr. Dr. Oz, has had some pretty rough moments. His show is centered around medicine and health, bringing so-called experts on every week. My mother loved this show. Oprah was partnered with both of these people, meaning that whatever their shows made, she got a little, little something for her trouble. She doesn't like to advertise how much she made from these programs, but considering how many episodes they have done and how long the programs have been on for, it's probably a lot. And those are the dark secrets Oprah tried to hide. Did we miss any good ones? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Angelina Jolie. You would imagine that two people who consider themselves to be humanitarians would agree on something, but apparently that is not the case between Angelina Jolie and Miss Oprah Winfrey. According to an insider close to Oprah, Angelina actually refused to help her launch her Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for girls in South Africa. According to the source, Oprah reached out seeking celebrity sponsorships and public backing for the project. But when she reached out to Angelina, she was met with a swift no. Oprah assumed that Angelina, of all people, would jump at the chance to represent such an incredible cause, especially considering how much Angelina apparently loved Africa. But the no was a devastation and she would never ask for Angie's help ever again. Many people believe that the hate towards Oprah stems from her decision to publicly side with Jennifer Aniston after she split from Angie's ex, Brad Pitt. Hey, uh, to be fair to Oprah, the split came literally weeks before Brangelina became public, so I'm just saying. Number 9, Ice Cube. Ice may have gotten his career thanks to his epic music chops, both as a solo artist as well as during his time with the NWA, but these days you probably know him as the guy from Ride Along or 21 Jump Street. Ice Cube started acting in movies in 1991, debuting in the film Boys in the Hood as Doughboy. He continued to act over and over again, starring in movies like Friday, Anaconda, and Are We There Yet? His dislike for Oprah comes from the fact that while he has starred in several movies, and has become more widely known for that, she has never invited him onto her show. She's even asked his co-stars to appear rather than himself on multiple occasions. In 2006, Ice Cube expressed his frustrations, saying that his barbershop co-stars Cedric the Entertainer and Eve were invited onto the show while he was left onto the sidelines. He pointed out how crazy it is that Oprah has all of these people with dark pasts and straight up convictions. Plus, if he wasn't a rags to riches story, who the heck was? We got a little piece of that story in the film Straight Outta Compton in 2015, which is a film that received massive critical success and that was never mentioned on Oprah's show. Ever. Not once. Number 8. Seal. This man may be known for his vocal chops, but he should be known for his meme making abilities. Just days after the Golden Globes in 2018, Seal posted a meme on Instagram consisting of several photos of Oprah Winfrey cozying up with a man whose name I am not allowed to say on the internet because he's so heinous. He's the guy who produced half of Quentin Tarantino's movies, he's the main cause of the Me Too movement, and for the rest of this entry he shall be referred to as Java the Hutt, because he kind of looks like him. Oprah and Java were photographed spending time together, and one photo even made it look like Oprah was pushing singer Rita Ora towards Mr. Hutt. Seal captioned the image saying a bunch of stuff that I can't quote. Gosh. Darn internet. The meme itself read, when you have been part of the problem for a decade, but suddenly they all think you are the solution. I'm not sure how deep this feud goes, but on the surface it seems that Seal has been trying to warn us that something is going on for quite some time. Number seven, Ludacris. Luda. Sorry, I just needed to get that out of my system. Ludacris appeared on Oprah in 2004 to promote the film Crash. He claimed that Oprah ambushed him. With criticism about hip hop lyrics, instead of talking about the actual critically acclaimed movie that he was there to plug. Luda has since claimed that Oprah edited the show to make herself seem more favorable to the audience members. And he said during a separate interview that she edited out all of his comments and kept her own in. Of course, it's her show, but they were doing a show on racial discrimination and 
she gave Luda a hard time as a rapper when he came on the show as an actor. Luda revealed that his interview was extremely last minute, not knowing if it was a real thing until roughly 24 hours before. Following the interview on Oprah, she pulled Luda aside to the green room where he claims to have been berated by the talk show host. According to Oprah, having a rapper on her show made her feel like she was empowering them. He said it was like being at someone's house who just really didn't want you there. At that point, he had already been so uncomfortable, but that was just a little bit of cherry on top of the, of the Sunday. Her main concern was his use of the N-word in lyrics, but he quickly pointed out the hypocrisy of having people like Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock on the show who were famous for using that slur in their sets. Oprah's shadiness was on full display following the interview from Luda. Nope, I, I can't say it normally. I'm sorry. Number six, Monique. The beef between comedian and actress Monique and Oprah Winfrey dates back to 2010. Monique won an Oscar for her performance in Precious from 2009. And leading up to the film's premiere, Winfrey interviewed Monique's brother, Gerald, who Monique claimed to have been very physical towards her growing up in a truly dark way that I really can't get into. In a since deleted Periscope video, Monique claimed that she gave Winfrey her blessing to do the interview, but was shocked and disgusted when her parents were in the audience. In the years that followed, Monique eventually forgave Oprah for creating such an uncomfortable moment for herself and her family. And while forgiving Oprah, she does continue to say that she would never forgive her parents for the role that they played and for not doing something about the situation that was happening right under their noses. Oprah really needs to stop bringing people on the show to talk about some dark stuff. It's just not fun. It's just not fun. Number five, Whoopi Goldberg. In author Kitty Kelly's unauthorized Oprah biography, Kelly claims that Whoopi Goldberg became a persona non grata, aka an unwelcome person, to Oprah after Whoopi was nominated for an Oscar for her role in The Color Purple. The book noted that following the honor, the comedian never appeared on Oprah's show again and was noticeably shunned from her 2006 Legends Ball. It wasn't until Oprah invited the entire cast of The Color Purple onto the show that the so-called feud was addressed. It turns out that Oprah had actually ran into Whoopi at Tyler Perry's party sometime after the 2006 snub. Goldberg confronted Oprah, leading to a hilariously adorable moment between them. She asked Oprah why she was mad at her, to which Oprah replied, Why am I mad at you? I thought you were mad at me! They mutually agreed that they really should have just picked up the phone a long time ago and settled the dispute, so to say. Number four, David Letterman. A majority of the world believes that Oprah's feud with David Letterman dates back to 1995 after he made an awkward joke at the Academy Awards. But Letterman claims that their beef actually started a lot earlier than that. According to an interview between David and late night host Jon Stewart, David claims that his feud with Oprah began many, many years before the Oscars. He explained that he ran into Oprah when they were both on vacation with other people. He explained that she was with Stedman at the time and David was with his then girlfriend. Regina. David decided it would be really funny to prank Oprah one day at lunch. The story goes that the waiter walked past him and he simply pointed to Oprah and said, this woman right over there has been kind enough to take care of our checks. And then they got up and left Oprah with the bill. Yeah, I'm not surprised that she's not stoked about that. Even millionaires don't appreciate sneaky people. Winfrey has never cited that as being the source of her anger though. Apparently she felt that the feud began when she was a guest on his talk show in 1986. David continued to make rude jokes at her expense and made her feel extremely uncomfortable. She did not speak to him for 16 years after that. David is a strange man, especially when it comes to female guests, so it's not a surprise that she was uncomfortable the whole time. Number 3. 50 Cent. The rapper once referred to Oprah as an Oreo in the January 2006 issue of Elle magazine, complaining that the talk show Queen started out with the views of a black woman, but was now catering to the middle-aged white American woman for so long that she became one herself. His words, not mine. Scent even named his miniature schnauzer Oprah as a dig at the talk show host. During an episode of Oprah's The Next Chapter, Scent was invited on to discuss the situation and clear the air. Oprah visited 50 at his grand mother's house for the interview, where he explained that his frustrations lied with Oprah's lack of hip hop artists on her show and just how much she detested the use of the N word. He claimed that he had seen moments on the show when she would discuss her feelings on rap culture and everything that was wrong with it, going on to say that she would occasionally target his music directly. According to Scent, he called Oprah his enemy in the exchange and he has never spoken to her again. Number two, Joan Rivers. The late Joan Rivers actually publicly 
fat shamed Oprah Winfrey on live television during her first ever live TV appearance. Great way to start a relationship. Oprah spoke out about the incident in her book Food, Health and Happiness, and in one entry she tells the story of appearing on The Tonight Show in 1985. All was going smoothly and she was starting to settle into her role, and that was when she was asked the one question she did not prepare for. Joan Rivers asked Oprah how she gained the weight. According to Oprah, she was just stunned because Joan just asked her on live TV how she was so fat. Her words, not mine. I'm not calling Oprah fat. We do not fat shame here, obviously. Joan was acting as a guest host at the time, sitting behind a desk that was not hers, telling Oprah that she was fat. That is like next level rude. In the years that followed, Joan claimed that she loathed Oprah, allegedly calling her rise to fame completely opportunistic. For years, she believed that Oprah's only so-called claim to fame was her gift to exploit people's suffering and emotions and turning them into TV ratings. Oprah has brought on a lot of people who are suffering from serious hardships, but this is a popular format for many people like Dr. Phil or Dr. Oz. Man, there are a lot of doctors on TV, huh? Dr. Oprah, I guess that just didn't have a nice ring to it. And at number one, Chris Brown. Chris was in some hot water in 2009 after Oprah hosted a domestic violence episode in which she showed footage of Chris's infamous video involving his then girlfriend Rihanna. After the episode aired, Chris took his frustrations to People Magazine, which is a good place to go. He commended Oprah for addressing the fact that it was a problem, but that it was a slap in his face. He went on to tell people how much he had done for Oprah over the years and how this was a massive betrayal, telling her to be more helpful. Okay, Mr. Brown. Oprah released a statement later saying that she was very appreciative of his help and charity, but that she takes domestic issues very seriously. Chris doubled down by retaliating against Oprah, telling her that she was bashing him and tearing him down rather than building him up. Well, we all know how most celebrities feel about Chris Brown these days, so I think she was in the right there. Number 10, Cindy Crawford. Model and actress Cindy Crawford has called Oprah out over their 1986 interview that took place on her show, where Oprah asked the then 20 year old to expose herself to the crowd. Crawford reflected on the interview in a new documentary called The Supermodels on Apple TV Plus. I swear, everybody's got a plus these days. The documentary spotlights the careers of several models like Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, and of course, Cindy Crawford. In a clip from the documentary, Winfrey is heard introducing the then aspiring supermodel to the Oprah Winfrey show before she asked her, did she always have this body? This is unbelievable, stand up. Now that's what I call a body. Yeah, I know that's not a good Oprah Winfrey, but hey, <laughs> who cares? She is visibly uncomfortable and sheepishly stands up before the studio audience cheered as she showed off her figure. According to to Cindy, she felt like a child in that moment being told what to do by her superior. She felt that the moment was more of a show us why you're worthy of being here type situation than anything else. At the time, this was just some weird thing that Oprah asked her to do, but eventually it morphed and mutated into one of the most uncomfortable moments of her early years in modeling. The most shocking thing for Cindy was the fact that this was Oprah Winfrey trying to tell her what to do. This woman known for kindness and generosity was just making her feel like a puppet. Number nine, Seal. This man may be known for his vocal chops, facial scars, and many other things, but he should be known for the meme-making abilities that he holds deep within. Just days after the Golden Globe, Seal posted a meme on Instagram consisting of several photos of Oprah Winfrey cozying up with a man whose name I'm not allowed to say on the internet because he is just so heinous. He's the guy who produced half of Quentin Tarantino's movies, he was the main cause of the Me Too movement, and for the rest of this entry, I'm gonna refer to him as Java the Hutt, because he looks exactly like him. Oprah and Java were photographed spent spending time together, and one photo even made it look like Oprah was trying to push singer Rita Ora towards Mr. Hutt. Seal captioned the image, saying a bunch of stuff that I'm not allowed to quote because gosh darn internet and their rules. The meme itself read, when you have been part of the problem for decades, but suddenly they think that you are the solution. Now, I'm not sure how deep the feud between Seal and Oprah really goes, but on the surface, it seems like he's been trying to warn us about her for quite some time. Number eight, Ice Cube. Ice Cube may have gotten his career thanks to his epic musical chops both as a solo artist as well as his time with the NWA, but these days you probably know him as the guy from Ride Along or 21 Jump Street. That's right, he's the captain. Ooh, Schmidt, well, let's not get into it. Ice Cube started acting in movies in 1991, debuting in the film Boys in the Hood as Doughboy. He continued to act over and over again, starring in movies like Friday, Anaconda, 
and are we there yet? His dislike for Oprah comes from the fact that while he has starred in a ton of movies and he's more widely known for it, she has never invited him onto his show. She even asked his co-stars to appear more times than himself on multiple occasions. In 2006, Ice Cube expressed his frustrations, saying that his barbershop co-stars Cedric the Entertainer and Eve were invited on the show while he was just kind of left on the sidelines. He pointed out how crazy it is that she has all of these people with dark pasts and convictions onto the show, and besides, it's a whole rags to riches type deal when she brings people on, and if Ice Cube wasn't a rags to riches story, then who was? Now we got a little piece of that story in Straight Outta Compton, but we'll talk about that another time. His feud with Oprah has been long standing, and so far it's looking like he is definitely on the opposing side of this whole Maui situation. Speaking of which, number 7, Jason Momoa. Aquaman, the enemy of Dom Toretto, and now the man speaking out on Oprah's Maui scandal. Jason Momoa is a gifted actor, and by all accounts he seems like a gifted person too. Recently, several news outlets have claimed that Jason is on the opposing side of the fund. According to these outlets, Jason posted a video to Instagram in which he addresses the fires and offers his own support to the victims, but while never mentioning anyone by name, he mentions that some may use this as a way to exploit or to make profit, but that wasn't his intention. The clip went viral, and as you can guess, outlets were interpreting everything they could from it, with the biggest headlines being, Jason Momoa calls out Oprah for wildfires. Now, while not completely inaccurate, the general consensus is that there is no bad blood between these people. Jason has yet to specify who would profit from this, but since the backlash, he's actually been posting videos on a regular basis, updating his followers on the situation and his position in assisting so far. Of course, Jason has donated money to the People's Fund of Maui, and he even teamed up with Dwayne Johnson to do public functions and collaborations to help raise awareness and scrape together as much money for the people of Maui as possible. Speaking of Dwayne Johnson, number six, Dwayne Johnson. When it comes to this whole Maui fund situation, there is one person that keeps being left out of the conversation, and it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, Johnson is of course one of the most bankable men in Hollywood, starring in several franchises and jungle-based movies, but he's decided to partner with Oprah to create this People's Fund of Maui and donated $5 million of his own money to match Oprah's donation. Now, The Rock received a large amount of criticism, but not nearly as much as Oprah. The main reason being is that The Rock has a significantly smaller net worth. He's still only a millionaire, okay, everybody? He's ju just as poor as the rest of us. Thousands of his followers have defended him rather than pass judgment. Let's face it, $5 million is still a ton of money, and it's going to make a lot of people very happy. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of information regarding his position towards Oprah at this time. The comments on their posts have been turned off, and the People's Fund of Maui has raised a ton of money since this whole backlash thing started. So at least there's something good coming out from all this negativity. Number five, Angelina Jolie. You would imagine that two people who consider themselves to be humanitarians would agree on something, but apparently that is not the case between Angelina Jolie and Oprah Winfrey. According to an insider close to Oprah, Angelina actually refused to help Oprah launch her Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for girls in South Africa. Take a sip every time I say Oprah. According to the source, Oprah reached out seeking celebrity sponsorship and public backing for the project. When she reached out to Angelina, she was met with a swift no thank you. Oprah assumed that Angelina, of all people, would jump at the chance to represent such an incredible cause, especially considering how much Angelina just loved Africa. But the no was a devastation and she would never ask for Angie's help again. A lot of people believe that the hate towards Oprah stems from her decision to publicly side with Jennifer Aniston after she split from Angie's ex Brad Pitt. Hey, to be fair, the split came a couple of weeks after, you know, I'm not gonna get into Brangelina, that's drama for a different story and a different list. Number four, Tom Hanks. Rumors have been circulating online that Tom Hanks may have received some inside information on the Maui wildfire situation that pertain to Oprah. Now, a ton of videos have been published online in the last few days claiming that Oprah orchestrated the Maui wildfires and hired a private team of firefighters to make it look more legit. Now, according to several media outlets, Tom was made aware of a secret plot because he's just so close to Oprah. The two have been known to share the occasional night out and some pasta. Now, well, it turns out that these were just rumors. In fact, they were actually created by an AI. Someone told a computer somewhere to write a story about Tom and Oprah, and the computer came up with Oprah sets Maui on fire, which is very dark. While it's a catching thumbnail and surely a fun little bit of information, the reality is that Tom has absolutely no idea what's going on. When asked about his position on the Maui fund, he has had nothing but positive things to say and is actually a little bit disappointed with the reaction from the world. When America's dad tells you he's disappointed, you gotta listen. That's harsh. Number three, Ludacris. 
Luda, <laughs> Luda, sorry, just gotta get that out of my system, do it a couple of times. Ludacris appeared on Oprah in 2004 to promote the film Crash, and he claimed that Oprah ambushed him. With criticism about hip hop lyrics instead of actually talking about the critically acclaimed movie that he was there to plug. Luda has since claimed that Oprah edited the show to make herself seem more favorable to her audience members. He said during a separate interview that she had edited out a lot of his comments while keeping her own in. Now, of course, it's her show, but they were doing a show on racial discrimination and she gave Luda a hard time as a rapper when he came on the show to be an actor. Luda revealed that his interview was extremely last minute. He didn't even know he was going to be on the show until about 24 hours beforehand. Following the interview on Oprah, she pulled him aside to a green room where he claims to have been berated by the talk show host. According to Oprah, having a rapper on her show made her feel like she was empowering them. He said it was like being at someone's house who just really did not want you there. At that point, he had already been uncomfortable, but that was just a little cherry on top. Her main concern was of course his use of the n-word in lyrics, but he quickly pointed out the hypocrisy of having people like Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock on the show who were famous for using the slur in their sets. Oprah's shadiness was on full display following this interview with Luda. Luda! Luda! No, sorry, it's like a twit. It's like a twitch now. Number two, Kitty Kelly. In Kitty Kelly's tell-all book about Oprah, the author mentions the confidentiality agreements that co-workers and guest stars are made to sign, as well as a couple of other dark details. Now, the NDAs included everyone from Tom Cruise to the person who made his muffins. Over 500 staff members were forced to sign these documents, and one former employee, Elizabeth Cody, even tried to write a book about her time working for Oprah, but she was stopped by the courts, still being tied to the agreement. The NDAs were not meant to be a way to just keep the show secrets safe, but any and all of Oprah's secrets as well. The book also contained information from a source close to Oprah, who said that in her four years with the show, she could tell that there was absolutely nothing there with her partner, Stedman. Oprah just kind of wanted to portray herself as a woman who loved her man on TV, but Stedman has always felt like this side character in her world, never really getting his moment to shine. The book revealed a million things, but the common theme was lies, lies, and more lies. Number one, herself. Oprah Winfrey is taking the top spot on the list of people exposing Oprah because she's been doing it since day one. Her talk show is all about bringing the most vulnerable people on to get views. She's brought violence victims, health experts, fake psychologists, and convicted felons onto her program, all for the sake of profit. As the years went by, her style was adapted by more and more studios, making shows like Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, which were both equally as controversial. Not to mention a few years ago when she wrote a book detailing her life and rise to the top, revealing some truly dark truths about her home life. She herself was considered to be a tyrant by her family, but it seems that whatever negative juju was happening in that house has permanently rubbed off on Oprah. And those are the top 10 celebrities who have exposed Oprah Winfrey right now. Do you have some inside knowledge on the Winster? Well, let us know in the comments below. As always, thank you for checking out our content on the channel. Drop a like if you had fun, and please keep coming back every day with more celebrity updates. Thanks for stopping beyond the screen. We'll see you next time.